Hi, everyone. Welcome and glad you could join. My name is Monique and I'm with the CK12 Foundation here to talk about an interactive math lesson. Now, whether it's your first time here or whether you've been here before, I'd like to welcome you. And I'd like to start off today by looking at uh, one of the cafe responses from the last lesson. So this is the cafe, which is the discussion forum here on CK12. And for the post from the last lesson, we talked about ratios and how we can write ratio statements to compare two numbers. Now, if you wanted to check out the last lesson, there is a link to the recording on YouTube. Uh, one of the questions I asked last time was, what objects like around your house, or around your room, can you measure? And what object can you use to measure them? And what kind of ratios did you write from them? So one of the responses I got was, my desk is 20 pencils long. So this is great because we have two numbers involved here. So one desk, the length of one desk, and um, the length of 20 pencils. And the relationship between those can be written as one desk to 20 pencils. So I'm looking forward to more of your participation here on the cafe. And especially in our post for this lesson, where today we'll be talking about reflections. So when I say the word reflections, you probably think of a mirror. Now, with a mirror, you have a few different objects. You have the original image, which is in this case, my face. You have the mirror. In this case, I'm gonna to refer to this as a mirror line. Um, sometimes this is also called the axis of reflection, but today I'm gonna to use the word mirror line. And the image that you see in the mirror. So in this case, my reflected image in the mirror. So you have an original image or an original figure, original shape, a mirror line that we're reflecting our image across and the reflection or the reflected image, figure or shape. So in order to talk about kind of what happens to the image when it's reflected, let's do an activity. So today I'm gonna hold up my piece of paper on a clipboard and you can do this at home as well. But we're going to draw an image on one side of the paper and reflect it onto the other side, uh, onto the other part of the paper. So I'm going to take my pencil. Usually it's best to do this with charcoal, but it can get a little messy. Um, crayons can also work, like a dark colored crayon. I'm going to use a pencil for today. And I'm going to draw a shape on one side of the paper. So I'm going to draw my shape. I'm going to press hard on my pencil so it makes a dark line and I'm going to make it very thick so you can see what's going on. Um, I'm going to do a triangle for today. So yeah, feel free to do this at home. And feel free to make your own shapes. So I'm going to draw very dark, thick lines because what's going to happen is I'm going to reflect this image and use the lead from the pencil to do that. So I wanna transfer a lot of lead onto the pencil. So this is my original image. Now, in order to reflect this, I need a mirror line. So to make this mirror line, I'm gonna fold the paper. So you can create your mirror line in different ways. I'm gonna go straight across just because it's easiest from this angle. But now you see this line is our mirror line and we're gonna reflect this image onto the other side of the paper. So to make that reflection on a hard flat surface, we're going to scratch the image onto the other side of the paper. So you can use your fingernail. Um, I prefer to use a coin, but basically you're gonna scratch, kind of rub the paper hard and get the pencil to transfer onto the other side of the paper. If you need to, you can open it up and draw the lines a little darker on the original image and then try scratching again. Okay. So 
I think you can see here, I have my original image and my reflected image. And something to take note is that it looks very similar, just flipped, right? So when I talk about uh, the parts of the image, I'm gonna talk about their corresponding sides and angles, so their corresponding parts. So what does that mean? The part of the original figure that matches with the part of the reflected image, these are corresponding. So for example, this side and this side, the sides where I drew it on the pencil and I imprinted it on the other side. So we can talk about how this angle here on this figure corresponds to this angle right here. They're corresponding. Now notice that the corresponding sides are the same length. And you can measure this for yourself and prove it to yourself. But something else is that the corresponding angles are the same size. And you can get a protractor and try it out for yourself. We actually have an interactive that can help show how the corresponding sides are equal in length or the corresponding angles are equal in measure. So the big idea is that reflections are across a mirror line and the corresponding uh, parts are the same size. So when you do that activity, I'd love to see kind of what images you got out of it. Um, and you can show me by responding in the cafe. You can post a picture by clicking on the comments. And when you add a comment, you can insert an image and show me in your comment. Something else you can do at home is you can look around your house and tell me what are some objects or shapes around your house or your room that can be formed using reflections. So one example that I thought of was this envelope. I saw this envelope and I thought, if I just had a mirror line straight down the middle, it's as if the image was flipped. It's the same on one side and the other side of that mirror line. And this is a property called symmetry. So now looking at the lesson, which is the lesson is linked in the description of this YouTube stream. It's also in the cafe post. We'll take a look at some of the interactives that kind of show the parts that were of reflections that we might be looking at and kind of the special properties of them. So in this first interactive, we just practice labeling corresponding parts. So for example, we have the original image in purple and the reflected image in orange. And we wanna label what parts, for example, cor what part corresponds on to BC. So the segment BC on the purple image corresponds to this side on the orange image. And when you complete it, you'll get feedback that tells you how you did. The next interactive, builds off on that idea of corresponding parts. So we can imagine looking at this image, the black image is the original figure and the blue image is the reflected figure. If we drew a mirror line, we can look at what parts correspond to which ones. So in this case, the side CD corresponds to the side ST. And we can click on that part to identify it. And there are a bunch of figures for you to try out. So you can get a lot of practice um, identifying corresponding parts of reflected images. And now this is the interactive that I mentioned earlier, which basically builds off of the activity that we did with the artwork. Um, so the blue trapezoid is our original image and the green trapezoid is our reflected image. Um, and let's say we wanna look at reflections using different mirror lines. Instead of having to draw these figures out on a bunch of pieces of paper and fold them a bunch of times, we can 
uh, we can change our mirror line by dragging this red point and see what the reflected image would look like across different mirror lines. We also included a tool in this interactive that helps you measure the length of the sides and the angle. So right now we're on the ruler tool right now. We can pick between a ruler and a protractor and we can drag these red points and use them as kind of like a ruler or a tape measure and measure the length of the parts of the images. So for example, this protractor, we can use it to measure the angles by dragging the red points onto the vertices. And we can prove to ourselves that the corresponding parts are the same size. And then in this last interactive, you can get pretty creative, but what you do with it is you draw an image. So I'll draw a spiral here and we take a look at symmetry. So in this case, we try and create symmetrical uh, figures by reflecting this image over either the x-axis, the y-axis, or even onto all four quadrants of the coordinate plane. So let's see what happens when I do all four quadrants. I'll reflect it and I get that image. And you'll notice that the original image was in the first quadrant and these three other figures are reflections of that first image. Now, uh, when you get to this part of the lesson, I would love to see your drawings, what you got for your interactives. So feel free to either take a picture or grab a screenshot and post it here. And I'd love to see what kind of drawings you made. Um, that's it for the lesson. That's all I have for right now. Um, but I just wanted to point out that in the cafe post, I added a few links to some related content that you can check out, especially the simulation. So if you are wondering how a mirror really reflects the light rays and shows you images, this will show you some of the science behind it. So you can drag these sliders and change how the light rays might be reflected. And we can see what it would look like and the science behind it. All right. Well, thank you for your time today. I look forward to seeing your participation in the cafe. Um, and I hope you learned something about reflections, uh, whether it's about how reflections happen across a mirror line, whether it's about uh, identifying corresponding parts, or even thinking about how those corresponding parts of the original image and the reflected image are equal in measure. So thank you for your time. And I hope to see you again next week. Tomorrow, there will be a science lesson at 1130 Pacific time. Um, and until next time, have a lovely day. Bye.